come on, we gotta get that thing off. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Although I speak with angels' tongue, my faith and knowledge all surpass, but have no love, my gifts are vain, as clanging gong or blaring brass. For love is patient, love is kind, and never All things, all things endures, all things must end. Love will go by. For now we fear at darkened glass, our visions end, our tongues all cease. Impart we know, impart now. Then we will see love face to face. The gifts are many, the body one, and into one all are baptized. Beloved, share one heart, one mind, one hope, one Beautiful, beautiful song. We'll continue with the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our creator. In you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is We Are Called. Oh, oh, oh. 
God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation, and by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Special music by Jerry and Dennis. Today, I came across a poem, and it can be sometimes a little repetitious, so we thought we would change it a little bit today. And you will notice that there are three tunes being used. Oh. 
and the heart and the voice. Thank you so much. That was really interesting and informative that those three, I love those three tunes. We'll continue now with the readings. The first reading is by Isaiah 54 through nine. The image of the servant of the Lord is one of the notable motifs in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trust in God's steadfast love. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain, sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and as I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Psalm 116, 1 through 19. Please read responsibly. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call him. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought low and God saved me. Turn again to your rest. O oh, my soul, for the Lord has dealt well with you. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading, James 3, 1 through 12. This text uses various images to illustrate how damaging and hurtful the way we speak to and about others can be. Not only are we to control our speech, but what we say and how we say it are to reflect our faith. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know who, excuse me, not many of, not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make mis many mistakes, Anyone who makes no mistakes is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If he, put, if he put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by, guided by very small rudder whenever the will of a pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a force is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and it is itself set on fire by hell. 
for every species, beast, and bird, a reptile, sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, he blessed the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who made it likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth the same open both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you, Penny. You're such a good pinch header. Bless you. Wonderful reading. Our fathers from our mistakes. Heavens. We'll continue with the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the Ill elders and chief priests, the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Crosses. If you look for them, you'll see them everywhere. We hang them in our houses. We wear them around our necks. We tattoo them on our arms. We give them as baptismal and confirmation gifts. And we pound them in the earth to mark graves. They come in all shapes and sizes. Some are made of gold, others of splintered wood. Some are shiny and detailed. Others are simple and plain. Jesus said in our last reading, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. But what does it mean to take up our cross? And what are those crosses? Are they the sufferings each of one of us have? No doubt you've heard and maybe even said this phrase that when inconveniences or catastrophes hit our lives, it's just our cross to bear. We say that, whether it's about that annoying person at work, just our cross to bear. That positive COVID test, just our cross to bear. That leaky roof, just our cross to bear. We say that phrase as if pain and suffering are handed down by God to teach us a lesson, test our faith or punish us for being bad. And then we're often told simply to endure it. Jesus suffered, so must we. So hang in there. But if that is how we understand today's text about bearing crosses, then we've emptied out its meaning and depth and we miss its point completely. For that understanding justifies all suffering and worse, belittles God in his mercy. 
Today we heard that Jesus explained that he will suffer, be betrayed, rejected, and be killed. Peter wanted nothing to do with that, for he believed no king of Israel, no savior of God's people can be subject to such humiliation and such weakness. So Peter pulled Jesus aside and rebuked him, for he, the Messiah, can't possibly suffer and die. In fury, Jesus in turn rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, Jesus said. You've set your mind on human things, not on divine things. But what are human things com compared to divine things? Jesus said by focusing on human things, Peter wanted him to avoid suffering. But divine things for Jesus included suffering, pain, and death. Just imagine those for him, divine things were suffering, pain, and death. They are divine. But they're not so because God handed them out to unsuspecting folks. They're divine because God has always gone in place to places of suffering and death to be with his people. Jesus goes there too. Our Lord claims this, the suffering of the world as the very place where he'll be found. For that's where divine things are. And we can experience that truth ourselves. Long ago, as I would as part of my first ministry, very green as I was, I served a small hospital in Hedinger, North Dakota, one week per month as chaplain hall. A few times when I visited, I'd enter a room where the patient was dying or, or serious ill. The machines were all over the place. I was terrified. So when such a patient wasn't awake or no family was a I breathed a sigh of relief, said a quick prayer and a blessing and left. Like Peter, I wanted to avoid the suffering and the pain. But I was helped very much to grow in faith. See, once I, as I, as I served that, as that chaplain in that hospital, I entered a room of a 22 year old man who was so young. He had a major stroke, he was in a coma had all those tubes and machines. And when I entered, no family was around. But somehow, by the grace of God, I think, for I was afraid, as I've always been, I was given the courage to remain with that young man anyway. Eventually, the parents came in, we swapped stories about this young man. We prayed together. We wept together and experience God's presence together. For God was there. He really was there and we all knew it. I've never been as afraid again as I was when I first started. Not of human pain or death. For God is there. Thank God he is there. But truthfully, the human being is naturally avoiding suffering and pain, just like I did, just like Peter did. And Jesus, Jesus never does. For Jesus said, if any want to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. You see, this verse isn't about God handing out suffering, but what it is, is about God entering into that suffering of the world. The thing is, Jesus isn't calling to us to passive acceptance of pain, of grief. That's not the cross Jesus is talking about here. I like to think that Jesus means the cross like the one on our foreheads, that invisible baptismal cross, that cross that marks us as the beloved children of God. For in that baptismal cross, God says, with you, is where I choose to be. With you is where I choose to be. To remind us, God has marked us with that cross of Jesus, one that won't wash off or wear out. That's what happens when we're baptized. We're not promised safety and security or lives without pain and suffering, but we are promised unconditional value and love 
in the midst of this oh so broken world. We are named and we are claimed by God who'll be with us all the days of our lives. So today as a way to remind ourselves of that and as part of communion, let's continue that old tradition that Calvary has. We did that before the pandemic and let's do it now by, we can't dip our fingers in the baptismal water as we walk forward to the altar rails, but we can trace with dry hands that invisible baptismal cross before we receive the bread and cup. Let's not forget that you and I, my friends, have been marked by the cross of Christ forever. That is the cross we bear. So take up that cross and follow Jesus into the broken world our Lord loves so much. For Jesus tells us that's where he'll be. That's where he needs you and me to be too. Let's help him bring God's peace, God's mercy and justice. For Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is, will you come? and follow me. Ready? Almost. <laughs> I am very patient. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never? continue now with the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers. Perfect. Freed by God in Christ to live and love and serve, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's beloved creation. Gracious God, you call your church to embody the love you have shown us. Raise us up each day to bear witness against sin, death, and the grave. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creative God, quarks and galaxies bear witness to your imagination. Inspire scientists, naturalists, and conservationists who work to conserve precious natural resources. Grant us the wisdom to be good keepers of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you bless citizens with the gifts of reason and perseverance. Embolden people around the world to seek the common good to serve their neighbors, and to delight in freedom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, you bless us with an abundant world. When your children wander hum homeless, hungry, and naked, strengthen us to be your presence as we care for all those in need, especially for Vern's health and Sandy and the passing of her husband. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Welcoming God. Thank you for the con this congregation where we have found a home. Make us restless as we seek new and creative ways to expand our loving invitation to all people who seek a community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In every time and in every place, you have raised up examples of loving service. Make us all good and loving witnesses to your extravagant compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your wide embrace, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And for special music by Gary. <laughs>
Let us pray. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them offered in great thanksgiving and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Without your, your union, your elements of bread and the cup, and we'll continue. And we're going to begin with that sign that's marked invisibly in all our foreheads, the, the sign of the cross. Nicely done. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. Your name. Oh, sorry. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your body, your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. Please lift the bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please eat of the bread, the body of Christ given for you. Please lift the cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please drink from the cup, the blood of Christ, shed for you. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. May we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ be filled with heavenly blessing and grace. And receiving the forgiveness of sin, may we be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Communion blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table, you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Sing a beautiful hymn, Abide With Me.
Gary? We'll sing, Abide With Me. Yes, they're waiting <laughs> for you, Gary. <laughs> Thank you. He's coming. <laughs> He's worth the wait. send you light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you and the holy <laughs> angels accompany you and the blessing of almighty God, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. And for the possible salute. Go salute. <laughs>
Everyone on mute because it's time for the dismissal and we need some chaos. <laughs> Go in peace. Yeah. May God's love known. Amen. 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 It's wonderful. That's what it was. It was. It was service. We had some. Um, yeah, all of you, you pitch hitters who just stepped up and did it. It was amazing. And I appreciate it so much. There's something else. Love you. So have a great, <laughs> have a great week. See you soon. Be good. All of you. Stay safe. Everybody have a good week. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, yes. Bye -bye. Yes. Bye -bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.